Good morning. My name is Jason Coyle, Operations Section Chief for Southwest Area Team 1. Today is June 13th, and this is your morning operational update for the north zone of the Calf Canyon and Hermit's Peaks fires. Last night, the infrared flight reported the fire's acreage at 320,495. There's currently 2,293 personnel assigned to the incident and the fire 70% contained. So before I go to the map today, I want to talk to you a little bit about how we're uh, tracking the repair, the suppression repair, and the, um, the containment or the, that indirect line completion. So when you have um, a, a project at this scale and when they're, they're building that shaded fuel break, but I guess let me, let me tell you something about our, the terminology here. So a shaded fuel break, we've, we've covered this before, but it's been at least a couple weeks probably, is where we take and basically make a dirt road in the middle of it, and we call it a dozer line, but it looks just like a dirt road. And then on either side of that dirt road for a uh, for 300 feet, so 150 feet on either side, there is, uh, we remove most of the trees. When I say most of the trees, what we wanna do is we wanna make it so that the canopy spacing, so if you're laying on the back looking up between the trees, that those canopies don't touch. So, I'm saying so a lot because this is a little bit hard for me to explain. When we do that, we first remove the dead trees and then we remove the trees that are more fire prone. So if there's a bunch of aspens in an area, we'll leave those aspen because aspen don't burn good. And then those, those trees are pulled out of there and then they are skidded, so they are drugged to a landing. And once they get to that landing, then they're processed so the branches are stripped off of them, um, the tops are, are cut off of them, and they're made into log links. And then the, the, the slash, which is what the branches and the tops that are cut off of is called, piled in one area, all the logs are piled in another area, and then we have log trucks that are loaded with a thing called a loader, and then they are taking it down to our, the off the line area where we're, where we're decking the logs. So they build log decks, big, big, um, just like Lincoln Logs, if you had all your Lincoln Logs, a whole bunch of them stacked up for like a mile long, then that's, that's what you see there. That's the work that we're doing right now. And when it gets there, then once we get the rest of the work figured out on how we're gonna move them to the different communities, then they'll all be, already be moved there. The benefit of concentrating on that work first is that if, all, if and hopefully very, very soon, the weather gets wetter, then they'll be in a place where we can still get access to them and still get them back down to y'all. So anyways, so the way we're, we're calling that work then in the different stages, the way what we are calling the different stages of that work is road or route construction and then cutting and then uh, logs hauled so they're removed from there and then it's complete. And I guess the, la the last phase of that, which I should have mentioned, is after we pull those logs out of the, the, those areas, then we have the masticators that go in there that are basically an excavator. The, the big excavators that you, that you see digging ditches on industrial projects, like actually a couple of them in downtown Taos right now. Those things with a different head on them. So instead of a scoop on the end of them, they have a weed eater. One that, that I think that'll paint the picture. A weed eater that's made out of chain, basically. So if you can imagine a big a big weed eater that's made out of chain that you actually, when they're operating, you wanna be about at least a half mile away from them. So they go in there and then they mow down the brush and then it's done. And you know we call that removing the vertical continuity of the fuel. Although that brush is still on the ground, it's, it doesn't burn as aggressively as quickly when it's laying on the ground all chopped up as it does when it's standing up. So that's the process that we go through. And then with the repair work, uh, you know, I've talked to you over the last couple of days about how we look at, we've been trying to identify all the properties that if we gain access to a property and there's work that needs to be done, that we'll go do that work. If somebody doesn't want us there, we won't, we'll, we'll leave. If gates are locked, we won't go in there. Or if somebody tells us not to go in there, we won't go in there. So we're tracking all that on the map. And then that 
we identify which areas have repair needed and then which areas are in progress of getting that repair completed and then when they're completed. And again, we're prioritizing the highest, we're pr how does it say, we're prioritizing the highest priority. So we're prioritizing the areas where there's the highest risk of uh, significant negative impacts from post-fire effects, from flooding, um, from heavy monsoon downpours, that kind of stuff. So we're prioritizing those first, but it's a big system. So I'm gonna show you on the map the way that system looks as we apply it, because it's, I mean, we're doing good putting the fire out, so I figured I would share with you the, the next phase so you know that it's, you know, it's, I guess the best way I can, uh, the best way I can think of talk about this is when, when I built my house, the, I, I remember a contractor told me that was an experienced contract friend of mine. He said that when you get sheetrock up, you're 50% of the way done. I'm like, no way. By the time I get sheetrock up, I got to be 75, 80% of the way done. Surprise, the experienced contractor was right. When you get sheetrock up, you're 50% of the way done. So kind of us, when we get the fire out, you know, maybe, I, we're probably a little better than 50% of the way done, but we're not all the way done. And, and the rest of the work I'm talking about right now is the, is what gets us to that 100%. It's that getting your cabinets. It's that finished carpentry kind of stuff. So we'll just start down here in the south, south of Mora. And you'll see all these dozer lines down here are red. So they're, they're red because they have repair that's needed. The dozer lines down here further to the south in the middle of the burnout or the middle of the burned area are green because the, the repair has been completed. You can see these areas that are in yellow right here just north of Mora. That's because repair is in progress. And then as you move all the way up the fire, there's a lot of red right now. Then you get up here north of Guadalapita, there's a pocket of green. That's because that's one of the areas where our repair groups started concentrating their efforts. And then they'll work to get this work done around here. And then they'll continue to move south. These group down here will continue to get their work done there. And they'll continue to move north. The group that's working here in the Chacon area will continue to get their work done and then move south. And I, I hope this kind of illust this illustrates, not kind of illustrates, but that this illustrates why it's important that we um, don't spend a lot of time trying to chase down every property owner if we and we just go in and do the work if we can get access because once this group is done here and then they move down here that's a half a day to move and then they start work again and if they move down here it's a half a day to low boy that equipment to get it moved down towards Holman and around and we want to get it all done and we want to get as much of it done as we can before it rains so if we're spending a lot of time uh, well, we better not go in there. Let's try again to call that person. We're not going to get as much done before it rains, and that means that there's going to be more damage. So that's what the repair side of it looks like and how we're progressing around the fire and what the different colors on our, on our, new, our new and improved map look like. So now let's go up to the contingency line. So if we look at the contingency line, this is 76 Road going in. It's all green. It's green because all the work's done here. This, the, the road is complete and the, and the shaded fuel break all the way around it is complete and all the logs are moved off of it. You see these areas that are yellow right here. So that yellow means cutting complete. So the feller bunchers have come here to cut the logs. And then when you see the pink spot right here, that is that the logs have been hauled. So this just needs to be masticated. Once this is masticated, it'll turn green. Once this is masticated, it'll turn green. Once this is, is done, the, the folks that are in here doing the hauling will be up here doing the hauling. And so you can see, you'll kind of see this progression of these colors going towards green up and out. And then on the southern end, the same thing. And then once you see all this stuff green, then all those contingency lines will be done. Now, you'll know, continue to reevaluate um, what's appropriate and we'll be conferring with the folks that we work for to make sure that we're that we're, we're doing what is is necessary and appropriate um, but it's the the reason that we're doing this is primarily because the fire to the south um, is still uncontrolled but you know the, if anybody watched the news yesterday saw on Flagstaff uh, two miles from my house there was a fire that that blew up yesterday and went 15,000 acres into heavy timber. There was another fire east of town last night, uh, east of Flagstaff, 
that uh, we're not sure the size, but it, it ran at least three or four miles. So we know what, what this time of year is like. And the next couple of days is going to be the kind of weather that adds that large fire growth. So making sure that this work is done is important for this fire, but it also has a huge amount of value downstream. The last thing I want to leave you all with is today is a red flag. There's a red flag warning today. There's going to be extremely dry air. And the probability of ignition of a, of a spark, if it lands on something that will burn pine needles, leaves, paper, of it catching fire is 100%. So we're dealing with the midnight fire, and we're being successful about getting around it. We're dealing with all the work going on here on the north zone of the Calf Canyon Hermit's Peak, making sure that we can uh, reduce the, the impacts when the precipitation that's hopefully going to show up at the end of this week arrives. But we need your help to make sure that that's all we're dealing with. Both of those fires in Flagstaff were, well, one of them was known to be human caused, and, and, and the other one is under investigation. Um, but it, we all need to be careful. And I just ask you to please be careful so we can stay committed to what we're doing right now and get it put out and so we don't have any more of those fires that go from zero to 15,000 acres in a day. And with that, I'll end the operational update. Thank you.